and welcome to another SOLIDWORKS Electrical Quick Look. Today we look at custom library components and how to create them. Essentially, why this topic? Well, that's effectively the most commonly asked question I get from regarding SOLIDWORKS Electrical from users. Can I create or add my own components to the electrical parts library? And of course the answer is yes, of course you can. But that answer always brings us to the next obvious question, which is how do I do that? And that is a slightly longer answer. And that's what I hope to address in this next few presentations, starting off with how we start up. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to break it down into three very logical parts to understand. Now, you do not need to follow all these steps once you're familiar with them. What you need to do is you need to start off by defining the basic components. You need a basic 3D part and you will need, of course, the manufacturer part data. All right, and you need to define the electrical information. Following that, you will need to define information on the 3D component using the component wizard in SOLIDWORKS Electrical 3D. If you are going to be working in the 3D environment and please, the last thing I always emphasize test your components before proceeding. I've seen numerous users who try creating their parts and they're all fine and dandy with it. They add it to a project and they find that the components don't work because they've left out some information. So please don't leave out the third step. All right, so let's get on with it. Let's take a look at the first step here, which is actually saving the 3D part to the library. Where do we save it? What do we do with it? What are the information we need? So to start off the process, we could actually build the part from scratch. Or in my case here, what I've done is I've decided to download a part from the 3D Content Central Library, which is a very useful location for standard parts that we might want to reuse. What I'm going to do here right now is I'm going to make use of this downloaded part here as my basis for a new connector that I will be creating in my electrical library. So this is an imported part here. We will leave it as that. And I'll just first and foremost save this up here. Now, I'd like to show the exact step that I'm creating here. Of course, as you are working on this, you would be able to very quickly decide where you want this to go. Now, what you could have to save it to is the location called the uh, parts library. The default location is found under the program data, SOLIDWORKS Electrical, SOLIDWORKS SLDPRT. I'm just going to call this for simplicity, triple zero, triple zero, and I'll save this. This is going to form the basis of my new library part. Okay, so next step I am going to go to is, now I'm quite done here. I could close the file if uh, you'd like, or you could leave it open. It doesn't quite matter at this point in time. What I'm going to do here right now is I'm going to go to Tools, SOLIDWORKS Electrical, Manufacturer Parts, manager. Now this process can be carried out either in the schematic or electrical 2D or the SOLIDWORKS uh, electrical 3D environment. I am choosing to do this in the 3D environment since I've already started here. I'm going to start off by adding a new manufacturer part. This is creating something from scratch. Now there are two tabs here, properties, circuits and terminals. Let's start with the properties. This allows me to define what the basic information is going to be. For example, let's just call this the same, 000-000. This is going to be my new part. Um, we would have to define the manufacturer. I've got a generic manufacturer here called XYZ. Um, it's going to be a connector. What library do I want to save it in? I'll save it under the user library. Article number, series, and so on, that's up to you. Now the mark root, you can choose the default or we could define our own. I will just select my default description. I'll just call this new connector, all right, and so on and so forth. Now from here, we could go on to define the electrical intelligence for this part here. For example, this part is going to be used in the line diagram, what sort of symbol is going to be attached to. I will just define for this example here the scheme um, symbol. And what I'm going to do here is I'll just go on to select a convenient three pin. Let me just look for a nice three pin that's going to be able to represent this. Let's take this left three pin. So this would be the symbol that would be used. And for this new component here, let's go on to add a 3D part, which is going to be the 3D part that I've just saved it. 
So what I've defined here is the basic manufacturing properties. To further add to the electrical intelligence, I'll need to add how the, the information to define how the connections to the wires or other components would be. I'm going to need to add three terminals here. So I've added three terminals and I'll change this definition here to terminal. And in each of these terminals, I will need to add the number of wires that are available for use. So for each terminal, I would say that um, you would only have one wire to use. And for two, let's go on to maximum wire number one. So what we've done here is we've added the circuits and terminal information. And effectively, that's what we've done here. We've defined the basic electrical information for a new manufacturer part inside the manufacturer parts library using the manufacturer parts manager. Simple as that. So just a quick recap of what we did after we um, saved our 3D part to the library, we defined the manufacturer part information, and then we went on to define the relevant electrical data information such as how the symbols and components are going to be linked to one another, um, the circuits or terminal information. In our case here, we also define the library classification effectively, what sort of components and where it should be found on the database. Just a couple of points to note at this point in time here. One, the location where you save your 3D part to. The typical location, if you are using a standalone machine like I am for this presentation, it is shown on the screen here, assuming you haven't changed anything. If you are using a shared networked location, please check with your administrator where this location is going to be. 3D parts, you can of course create them from scratch if you wish to, if you have the time, or you can reuse files imported or otherwise. And of course, whenever you create a new manufacturer part entry, you will need to make sure that the appropriate electrical data and the 3D component information to be used has to be clearly defined. Otherwise, you're going to have issues later down the road when you try to use it. So up next, we're going to talk about how we can add intelligence to the 3D component with the electrical component wizard. We will be looking specifically at creating connection points, but that's in part two. I'm going to end off today by addressing another commonly raised questions in the context of this and, um, presentation here, which is how do you access the 3D Content Central? Well, the most straightforward approach is to go to mysolarworks.com, log in. There's going to be a nice little location here for you to log in. If you do not have an appropriate login, you could always join it. And then there is a section in mysolarworks.com called CAT models, which is where I went. And when I narrowed down my search by connectors, that's where I found the connector parts that I required for this presentation. And with that, I thank you for your time. Please join me again in part two on how we make use of the component wizard. Have a nice day.